When I think about the reasons why someone would buy a Galaxy Note, I think about a huge display, cutting edge design, premium build quality, and a top of the range camera. Of course, an S Pen. An S Pen to do all those things that Samsung thinks you want to do, like write on your screen and annotate PDFs. Do you though? I think the reasons Samsung want you to buy a Note are completely different to the reasons you actually might buy a Note, but let's find out. The Note 20 line this year, although pretty confusing, is actually one of the better iterations in years gone past. Debatable whether you should even bother with the regular Note version, but this Ultra one I've got here will set you back £1,200 for the 256GB version. And at some respects, at first glance, it's hard to see what you're buying here compared to the old versions. It's quintessentially still a Note, retaining the same boxy look that the Note 10 Plus had, save for the humorous huge camera bump. There's no getting around it, this camera bump is ugly. Not getting to the stage where people would refuse to buy it, but certainly people aren't going to lust after it either. One thing to bear in mind though, is that huge camera bump that contains one of the best cameras that I've used on a smartphone so far. The 108 megapixel main sensor flanked by two 12 megapixel sensors, one telephoto, one ultra wide. And it's nothing to say that these cameras take the, some of the best photos that I've seen all year. They retain loads of detail, give you bright vivid colours and actually can be very versatile in almost every situation. The telephoto lens is only really used in really good light. You're actually getting a cropped in image from the 108 megapixel sensor in most situations. You're not actually taking images at 108 megapixels. The camera does some fancy technical sounding words behind the lines and downscales a lot of the images. But what that means in reality is you get images that retain loads of detail in, but you can actually store them on your smartphone. It's also joined by laser focus, which gets rid of a lot of the hunting issues that the S20 Ultra had. So in many respects with the Note line, you're usually getting one step ahead and they're solving issues that came up on the S20 line that went before it. Bear in mind though, the camera bump does make the phone very top heavy, sits a bit strange on a table, wobbles quite a lot, feels a bit strange in your hand and it actually does affect some stand-up wireless chargers as well. So that camera bump is not just a design choice, it actually affects the way that you use the phone. But it's not all poor designing from Samsung, they've worked wonders to get this down to only 208 grams. Really slim, really light, actually feels pretty great in the hand for something that contains a 6.9 inch screen. Bravo. My only issue is, does anybody like these curved screens? Not convinced they do, makes it ridiculously slippery. I have to use a case if I'm out and about with this thing, otherwise it's gonna make a bid for freedom and smash into like a million pieces. The curved screen also affects the hand gymnastics a little bit. With the 6.9 inch screen, your thumb's doing a lot of reaching, just fills me with not very much confidence. I'd like to see Samsung move back to a flat screen, like on the regular Note 9, please. While we're talking about that screen, 6.9 inches of one of the best screens you'll ever get on a smartphone. We're used to this by now. We see it year in, year out, 496 PPI, this year 120 hertz refresh rate, but not at the same time. For God's sake, Samsung, you dropped the ball here. I do revert to having the higher refresh rate. Uh, full HD is perfectly acceptable to me. I'd like to see them both at the same time, but that's gonna affect one huge thing, which is a massive downfall for this phone, is the battery life. The battery life is atrocious. I've got the UK version, which obviously has got Samsung's proprietary stupid chips inside it, not the Snapdragons that almost everybody else seems to have. I really struggle to even get four hours of screen on time. I've delved into the settings. I've put this to sleep and that to sleep and God knows what. I just really don't wanna to go to limiting my phone just to get decent screen on times. 
with 4,500 milliamp hours, this should be a bet much better battery life, but it's just not. It's terrible. This needs to be one of the biggest things that's sorted going forwards. And this leads back to the really one of the reasons why you buy a Note. You expect a nice big screen, you expect decent battery life. When everything is this sort of size screen now and your battery life doesn't live up, you're really going to start to struggle. This is one of the things that really needs addressing in the next version. Obviously, thirdly, the last thing that you expect from a Note is an S Pen. One of those cute little stylus things that means you can write on the screen, you can doodle, you can do this, that and the other, and we're not really too sure whether people actually use it or not. It's written off a bit as a little gimmicky. I am one of those people that does use the S Pen quite a lot. I use it for editing videos, I use it for taking smaller screenshots, I use it for writing on little things and sending them back through email. I use it a lot for business use, but I think I'm probably in the minority. A lot of people will probably use the S Pen as a bit of a gimmick for a couple of months and probably never use it ever again. I'm not sure whether the S Pen has ever been a reason why people will buy the Note. So we've spoken about the camera, we've spoken about the battery life, we've spoken about the screen size, we've even spoke a little bit about the S Pen. Those are the reasons why you would expect to buy a Galaxy Note. And it gets all of those things absolutely perfect, apart from the battery life. If you're going to go for this phone, see if you can get hold of the Snapdragon version. A few friends of mine have imported them from Hong Kong and whatever, and they work absolutely fine. And the actual fact, you can probably get them for a bit cheaper. Only problem is, if you're going to be buying this on a mobile phone contract, you're going to get the Samsung version. The Note 20 Ultra is definitely the best Samsung phone I've used, perhaps ever. I'm never a fan of their cameras, but they've done some really good work to make it rival the iPhone, in my opinion. Battery life isn't great, I can live with it, but I want to know from you guys, what phone do you think I should be using? For £1,200, there's definitely some better options out there. What phone should I review next? Let me know in the comments down below. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.